I'll I'll have to get you on the podcast chart one week then. This new show I'm doing oh, for podcast tight. radio. Yeah, the first one went out on on Sunday. I don't know if yeah. you heard it. No, but I saw, the, I saw you doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the interview with Dom Jolly went great. Um, yeah. I mean, what a guest to have on an opening episode. Yeah. The, the thing that let it down for me, I think, is the chart element. Now, uh, now I, 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 I think having an iTunes chart is an iTunes chart. A podcast chart is yeah. great. I just approached it all wrong. I approached it like really? it was a music chart. So I did it with a uh, music bed and like a countdown and it's not da, 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 well, I, I couldn't use that music because it's no, it, it, not, but, um no. but it was that kind of, that's the vibe i went for yeah and that's wrong because you know podcasting is kind of the the, the punk version of radio and and radio is is full of bs yeah uh, and, you know and that kind of thing is what podcasts are not you know what i mean so i've got to rethink it this week i'm happy with the interview side of it because i've got a guest yeah. every week but oh, I've got good. to I've got to make the chart a chart, but more of a casual chat of me sharing some podcasts that you might want to try out because it's one of the top twenty this week. That's got to yeah. be the vibe. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I got to read you. I'm just because I'm not happy with that bit at all. It just it 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 disconnects from you know talking to people, which is what the best kind of radio is. And if you probably remember, yeah. I don't know the the Bob FM show that. The, the, the bits I did with Chris Hubbard were my favorite bits, not the yeah. carefully constructed formatic bits. The bits really? were just, yeah. Just, I always enjoy listening to you guys chatting. And yeah. the thing was, you always felt, in, you felt included. You know, a lot of the other, some of the other radio shows that I can't bear listening to in the morning because they're too loud. You know, there's a kind of like a little crew and, yeah. and all of that, but you don't feel part of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's the key. It's got to be like, you got to be like the host of a party and you got to bring everybody in and you can't leave somebody yeah. sat alone in the corner because that's not fair. You, you bring them yeah. in and you know, you got to, every, everybody's got to come in and, and be welcome and be part of it. Yeah. And then, and they'll be part of the entertainment because they'll have great stories to share. Everybody's got stories to share. Yeah. Yeah. But now you and Chris, yeah, it was always, it was always good fun. Yeah. I'd love to work with them again one day, but I, I just, oh, you just never know. You just never know. Yeah. I've worked I with, you know, know, I've worked with some, some good people, along the years i worked with uh, a guy called richie firth in bournemouth twice yeah. uh chris hubbard yeah th they'd be my top two but i really? worked with a girl in nottingham called shirley ann who was crazy really oh just great she liked free stuff as well um <laughs> we, we got really? her a, we got her a free boob job on the show oh my god really Oh, oh, they didn't. You didn't broadcast while you were actually, was actually having it done or anything. No, that was televised. She got. She got. Oh a, Lord. Uh, There's a documentary. What the hell was it called? I don't know. It was called Changing Faces. Or something. I don't know. Anyway, and that oh, went out oh. on TV of her oh, procedure. God. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. She was. Uh, I mean, good for her. It was great for the yeah. show because it's you're on. You're doing a bit of TV in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rose, yeah. But. Uh, Oh, yeah, dear. she was, uh, she was crazy. Um, she knew, she could have got us killed actually at one stage. Really? I, Why? What happened? There, there was, there was, I, it was me and I had a sidekick, Jimmy, and he was the mini Mac. And I used to get yeah. him to do stuff I didn't want to do on the street and all the rest of it. I was a host in the studio and Shirley Ann was traffic and travel. Okay. And anyway, so she goes to get this boob job and she gets, she gets the boob job for free and she has it done. And we follow her progress, you know, each week for the consultation. How big do you want them? And she's going bigger and, you know, oh God. anyway, yeah. And um, then it's this TV show. It was, a, it was a series about Serge and she, one week, it, they did her, you know, radio yeah. present and they brought the cameras in and the line, they filmed us in the studio and then they did other bits and they interviewed us all and then they entered the before and after did the whole thing. And I said to the boss, I said, mate, we've got to milk this. We've got to get a poster on the side of a bus Oop, um, yeah. because we've got to, you know, we've now got this exposure. We've just got to keep it going that, you know, we're yeah. the station that the travel presenter had a, had a boob job on the whatever. So we found some budget for one poster. <laughs> that, <laughs> one bus. <laughs> it was one bus. It's going to go on a bus. Yeah. So I said, well, the poster's got it. We're only going to get one. We better be a good one. 
Yeah. So we kind of ask listeners as we always, you always bring everybody in, you know, what, do, how, what we can, what, how should this be? And yeah. somebody said, why don't you and Jimmy dress like James Bond, you know, tuxedo and all the rest of it. And Shirley Ann can be stood in between you like a Bond girl with a zip down thing and cleavage. You're kind of a, like um, Emma Peel kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And we thought, well, you know, that could work. So we went to this photographer and we told him we were going to do this. He said, yeah, 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 I like that. And he sent us to this place where you get outfits to dress up like. It wasn't, a, it wasn't Moss Bros, but it was, it was like, it, no. was, they, it was props and whatever. Okay. So they gave us these like tuxedo things or whatever, and they put Shirley in this thing with the zip, you know, with the, the zip with the big ring on it. So like the Bond girl yeah, kind of yeah. thing. So we're all like that. And, the, and then they gave us this other thing, which we ended up not using because it was wrong. And they were guns. So we looked like James Bond, but with a, yeah. you know, the shoulder holster thing. Yeah. Like, it looks like a bra thing with a, yeah. With yeah. a pistol in it. Yeah. So they gave us these to take to the photographers. And, you know, between there and the photographers, I said, you know, I'm not really happy with the gun. I don't think that's yeah. the right image for breakfast radio. No, you no. Know, I think people will get the James Bond thing if we just look yeah, the part. Exactly. James Bond doesn't always yeah. have a gun. No. You know, not, not, you know, he's playing cards in a casino. He's not, he's not got the gun. Yeah. So, so anyway, so then, um, Shirley Ann, she, um, if we, if we ever had like a dispute with people, she just turned on them. I can remember once we did this thing where we got this box of pies and stuff from Greg's bakers. And once a week, listeners, uh, emailed in or probably faxed in back then I don't know and we would take you all this food for your morning tea and sandwiches and you know stuff from Greg's and we'd sit there and have morning tea with them that was you you won us for your morning tea yeah me Shirley Ann and Jimmy and I remember once uh we were in this branded station mini uh with the radio station logos all over it and whatever I was in the back Jimmy was driving and Cheryl was in the front seat and Jimmy had just cut off a cyclist and the cyclist had had a go at us. Yeah. Justifiably cyclists, not my favorite people in the world, but you know, anyway, yeah. Shirley goes to Jimmy back up. So he backs up. She winds down the window and tells him to F off <laughs> in a radio station branded oh, vehicle. Lord. How that <laughs> didn't, you know, no. go in the local paper or something. I'll never know. No. But that's the kind of character she was. Yeah. So anyway, back to the story of we've got these the outfits brand. and stuff. Yeah. And we're in, I had a branded car uh, from a local Honda dealer had given me a car with the station logo on it or something. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't always follow the road signs. This was a mistake, not deliberate, oh, yeah. deliberate yeah. in Nottingham. Now, Nottingham at the time, when I lived there, I lived in an area called St. Anne's, which is a rough area. Yeah. There was a shooting. I think there was a shooting every week and there was a fatality at least once a month. Oh, shooting. Like, yeah. It was the shooting capital of Britain at the time. Oh, dear. Anyway, so I'm driving this car and we've got these tuxedos on. And Cheryl's got this thing on. Whatever. And I accidentally go the wrong way up a one-way street. Oh no. And I get half the way up and a van coming the other way stops. And I didn't even know I was in a one way street. Yeah. And this bloke gets out of the van and he comes and he, he, he gets out of the van. He walks up and he gives me what for in the van. And as he's walking back, Cheryl says, get the guns. <laughs> oh no. They're only toy guns, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. But the fella in the van wouldn't have known that, and he no. may well have been armed. He might have had something, some real firepower or if, in the or back. Or if not, he might have had a knife or anything. Or yeah. anything. anything. Jimmy goes oh. to get the gun, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> all, all the time in the branded <laughs> car. Yeah. With whatever radio station bla blazoned over, the, all over it. <laughs> I don't know how we got onto that. How do we get onto Not that? Not clever. All this from you nearly died for a boob job. This is what you're yeah. telling me. Yeah. 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 
I'm not being funny. When you, if you're a radio, if you're a radio weather and travel person, why yeah. do you need a boot job anyway? I don't she know. She wanted to go on TV, I suppose. I oh bless know. her. Well, you know, if that's what she wanted. She she did a lap she did a lap of the building topless after she'd had it done. Oh God, really? No, that was um, that was uh, I've done some I've done <laughs> done some shows I'm not proud of. Um, <laughs> Uh, same, oh, haven't we all? Well, <laughs> same same radio station, same radio station. Oh, I can think of two from that radio station and really? one from another. Have you got time for these? Yeah, yeah, and I've got an awful story as well. So they... <laughs> great. So we read in the paper that a sushi restaurant in Manchester, we're in Nottingham, a sushi restaurant in Manchester, is serving sushi off a naked woman. Oh no. So, like uh, sex in the city, I don't, I don't know. So yeah. I said, I said, well, I tell you what, if there's any women want to come in here, we'll get the sushi, like a real. Oh God! Right? <laughs> you would think no one's gonna call, right? You're just no. saying it. No, of course not. <laughs> so this lady calls up, and she goes, "My husband loves sushi," and I said, "Oh yeah, I would love to come in." <laughs> naked oh, no. and have him eat sushi off me oh so i'm like bring it up so this morning she comes in and she's laid right in front of me on the broadcast desk yeah. with not a stitch on jimmy's oh. dropping these bits of sushi here there and everywhere and her husband's got chopsticks and, I, and i'm <laughs> like <laughs> the other one was uh, same station. We'd got to talking about the chicken on the Kellogg's cornflakes box. Oh yeah. Because who was it? It was a comedian. Who's the comedian with the the pockets and the, and he used to do the funniest home video show and the glasses and he's uh, what the hell's his name? Oh God. Do you know the guy I mean? He's got like he's a, he's an actor. He's a doctor in real life. Um, oh yes, yes. Um, and he does stuff with the badger and things. That's him. Yes. Oh God, what is he called? <laughs> Isn't this awful? Yeah. He has, yeah. He's Harry, got Hill. Harry, Harry Hill. Harry Hill. Harry Hill. Harry Hill. So yeah, that's right. Harry cool. Hill had a cool. bit in his act where he says um, his grandmother says to him, "I can't seem to work out how to do this jigsaw puzzle." Uh, there's a picture of a chicken on the box and, I don't, and, it, and it's a box of cornflakes, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's the joke. And it's one of his bits. And, and I was like, well, why is there a chicken on a box of cornflakes? It is actually quite a random thing to put on something that, you know. It's true. Do, do, would chickens eat cornflakes? Because maybe yeah, they, they would. would. They, they would, would, right? Yeah. Now, they I don't know. Anything. So we got to that stage. So I don't know how it got to this stage. But we got to the stage where we asked the question, would a chicken eat cornflakes out of the arse crack of a builder? <laughs> because that's a natural progression. I'm not sure it, how Brian? we got, we, but we got no. there. We got, yeah. But I'm not sure how. So sure enough, somebody called up who had two chickens <laughs> and a builder called up and said he would, we would find out live on air <laughs> he would offer his cleavage right so once again purposes. he's on top of the desk <laughs> with his trousers down and his hairy ass out jimmy is sprinkling the cornflakes into the crack and then two chickens are released from their cages that they'd been brought in to see if they would eat the cornflakes out and i think one of them had a nibble but the thing is, the chickens were not happy. No. And the chickens got out and started running around the studio, freaking out. Yes. Then Shirl's screaming. The chickens and I, we don't know where the chickens are, but they're somewhere in here. One of them had got into like one of the wiring ducts. They had these big wiring. One of the chickens had gone in there. Yeah. Shirl's on the desk screaming blue murder because she's terrified yeah. of these chickens. Oh, she's scared. Of Some people are scared of chickens. Yeah. 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 So and not, none of this was foreseen. <laughs> no. 
No, uh, not a fine moment. We used to do stuff. And, we, and, and, and usually when we did stuff like that, we got into trouble. We had a horse in the studio one day. The back, horse, how do you the, fit a horse in a radio studio? We had, we had, at the back, the, 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 the studio was like here, if I'm, if I'm on the air here, there was a door out yeah. to a corridor and, the end, oh. and then the end of the corridor was a fire door. And they brought the, yeah. the horse through the fire door <laughs> into do. the corridor. It wasn't actually in the studio. It was in the corridor. I was in the corridor. But we ended up having the newsreader read the news on horseback. And, <laughs> um, yeah. And, but and then we got into trouble for that. We got into yeah. trouble for the chicken. We got into trouble for the sushi. But any of these ones where we had this just, you know, what if. And listeners didn't help because they would get us into trouble there was once there was once we found out i don't know how some someone no somebody rang up somebody rang up and said somebody rang up and said did you know if you put a light bulb in a microwave it lights up so we're like (laughs) no way go and get the microwave out the kitchen so jimmy brings the microwave out the kitchen we plug it in on the broadcasting desk we unscrew the light bulb one of the light bulbs in the studio yeah put it in the microwave turn it on and sure enough it did it lit up and we all went you heard it go like okay you put the microwave on it goes and you heard us all go oh (laughs) (laughs) and so then somebody else rings up and goes do you know if you put a cd in a microwave it makes a rainbow and we went (laughs) right well Behind me were uh, recorded CDs and it was a radio station with a really tight playlist and the entire yeah. playlist was only on something like 12 CDs. Yeah. They were, you know, they, they put them on there. Yeah. So I just grabbed one of the CDs. No, I actually pl- took the one out of the machine that was playing. I think anyway, it was one of the playlists, the CDs with the playlist on. Yeah. Put it in the microwave. Didn't make a rainbow. There were a few sparks and it wrecked the CD and we lost the 12th of the playlist that morning. Oops. Yeah. The music, the music director was the guy that followed me on the air and he, get, he just came in and he went, I can't look at you right now. I am so annoyed. I am so annoyed. <laughs> and, and I rang him up later in the day to see if he'd calm down because he didn't make copies. He got the CDs from record companies. He'd copied them and didn't have a backup oh, copy. God. And um, he just said to me, I can't believe you've been so unprofessional. And he hung up the phone. <laughs> now, I thought, wait a second. And I did this on the air the next day, and I shouldn't have done, because you shouldn't fall out with the people you work with. No. It's but not I said why. this on the air. I said, look, my job as a professional is to create entertainment in between the songs. And I did that. Yeah. So I was being professional. Yes. Your job is to look after the music library for this radio station and you didn't keep a backup and you're accusing me of being unprofessional. I think you're fine. I did my job. You didn't do yours. I should be at liberty to put any of the music that I wish in a microwave at any time I like. <laughs> if it's for entertainment. Yeah. If it's for entertainment, yes. Absolutely. If it gets ratings, we should do it. So what, oh, what's your story then? What have you got? Oh, I don't know if it's even really suitable. It's... Um, <laughs> I like I, it already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's not, um, it's probably the, the most embarrassing thing that I've ended up doing or the most cringeworthy thing that I've ended up doing on, in, wor- in, in work. Yeah. Um, which was, I, um, I worked on a show called Show Me The Money, which was on around sort of the year 2000. And it was a stocks and shares game show, if you imagine. On, on which channel? Um, it was Channel Four, right? And it, it was made, uh, yeah, by a production company. We worked for them, and um, uh, but because it was well, probably because it was Channel Four. So the idea is we had we had uh, teams, and they competed to try and sell uh, shares and things, buy and sell shares and make money. Um, I can't remember if they were doing it for real. It might, probably wasn't actually for real, um, but anyway. When we were pre- preparing for uh, the, to get the teams in and things like that, we because it was Channel Four and obviously they they needed it to be um, the teams to be representative of um, the people in the UK, if you like. So it couldn't all just be white people 
um, because that obviously wouldn't be fair. Um, but we had a lot of trouble because most of the people that were applying for the show were white and we didn't seem to have many sort of Afro-Caribbean or, or Indian or Asian um, people. Uh, so literally I was working with a producer who was, uh, was, was Asian he had me ringing up sari shops and Indian restaurants to ask if any of them had share clubs. Um, and it was just so awful. And then in the end, I man I'd remember, and it was just, and these people are like, why, why, why are you ringing? We no, what, we don't what, sell what share do you, What do you want again? You want you a want sari? A curry? <laughs> do you want some sari? What, who, what? I mean, and this is, I wasn't my idea. This is, this is Nigel Singh. That's the name of the producer. This is what he told me to do. It's awful. And um, then I thought, it's fine. I know a guy who's Asian who runs a, a, a share, a website about buying shares. And he said, don't worry, we'll put a team together of people. Um, you know, and I was sort of trying to be, you know, diplomatic and say, you know, can we make make sure that some of them are Asian or, or black or whatever? So because we want to, you know, be representative. Um, anyway, the whole team, they turn up and every single one of them was white. And I think one of them was, was the one that one of them was Israeli. And it was just and my producer just laughed at me. But it was just, yeah, it was just in And I thought, I, who I was thinking, I've got this really exciting job in TV, <laughs> working Channel 4, and, and I'll do this. It's just, oh, I think that was the last job I had in telly. So I was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. This is awful. <laughs> so so why did you move away from TV? Was it, was it that experience? Because there are other shows. No, I mean, a lot, it, well, once we actually, it actually got to be quite a lot of fun doing that eventually once we were actually doing the show. But um, no, I realised that I like writing and I like to be able to write about things in more detail. So I used to write um, the intros for scripts and things. Right. Um, and everybody said I was quite good at that. But you can go into a lot more detail when you're writing articles and things than you, than you ever can on telly. Yeah, yeah. Telly's yeah, a, telly that. seems to... The telly I've done, it takes ages compared to radio. It takes ages. Yeah. And what comes out is, is tiny. Whereas radio is the opposite. It, things can happen really quick. You can have an idea like somebody rings up and says, you know, if you do this, well, get the microwave, we'll just do it. You know, it's yeah. TV, you, you can't do that. And you can make it last the rest of the show. Yes. Because you can say, okay, we've got the microwave and in a minute we're going to see what happens when we put it in. And so you can get like, you can get an, a good hour's worth of content a, out of a, a three minute phone call. Yeah. Whereas in TV, you basically get 12 seconds of content out of a week's work. <laughs> you yeah. know? TV yeah. takes ages. I did a, a commercial for the, the show I was on at TFM in Teesside. Yeah. They got the budget. They said, we're going we're gonna to shoot a TV commercial and we're going to put you on Tyne Tees TV to promote the radio show. And it's, on, it's, yeah. it's, on, uh, it's on YouTube if you, if you want to oh, check. Oh, really? That. If you put yeah. Gra Graham Mac TFM commercial. Yeah. Graham Mac TFM commercial. And we, they hired a, uh, a nightclub and they dress me in a white suit, all white, white tie, white shirt. I look like Randall and Hopkirk deceased. <laughs> and I was supposed to be a, a, like an evangelist because the jingle package know. we had at the time had gospel singers on it. Ah. So they found an actual gospel choir from Stockton wow. who pretended to be the choir, even though the jingle package had been made in Dallas, in Texas. Oh. Okay. But they got, and they found a, there was a girl's voice in the jingle package. And I sang, I sang a lead over it that we didn't use on the radio, but for the TV bit, I sang a lead over it. And yeah. the, but there was a girl in it and they found this diva to be on this thing. And yeah. we got loads of listeners to be extras to clap along. And I'm pretending to be the Reverend Graham Mack and, you know, listen yeah. in the morning and all Demons this out and all that. Yeah. 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 And, um, we started shooting. I had to get there at seven in the morning yeah. and we wrapped at 7 PM and oh. the thing ran 28 seconds. <laughs> it was, it was 12 hours. Oh, 28 seconds, like 28 seconds of radio. You just do stand on your head. I mean, that was TV. Yeah. I mean, they would literally shot would come, 
do the thing and they'd go, no, there was a, there was a blue shoe on the bottom of my cheek and that to change, not the light, change the gels on the light. So the filtered yeah. light was a slightly different shade and like every Hair in the, minute, gate. the minutia. Yeah. The minutia of the detail that TV people go into, oh. you know, you have to have a tremendous amount of patience for TV. Oh, just can't um, stand it. Just, oh. <laughs> Well, well, it's well, just I, as I, well we're not TV stars. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Closest we get is Zoom. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs>